I am the CEO at Whāreki Māori Business Trust. You are with me for about the next, ooh, fun time, two hours. Uh, so we'll make this light, bright and easy to comprehend, hopefully. Um, I get the pleasure of introducing the next speaker, which uh, I'm really proud and honoured to be able to do. A little bit of information about him before we get into that. Our next speaker has been the Labour MP for Te Tai Tonga since 2011. Please don't make that anyone's birth date year of birth in this room. That would make me feel extremely old. Uh, he proudly represents Māori in the largest electorate in the country and has deep connections across Ngaitahu, Whanaunga, uh, and Te uh, Ngāti Hine in the far north. Uh, he is a passionate believer in Māori development and social justice and is a highly experienced member of parliament who has had the privilege of being parliamentary undersecretary to the Minister for Oceans and Fisheries as well as the Minister for Trade and Export Growth, Māori Trade. Growth. I emphasise growth. He now holds the portfolios for Courts and Minister of State for Trade and Export Growth. Please welcome to the stage the Honourable Reno Tirikatini. A kati tihe wa mauri ora ki te whaiao ki te ao marama. A tēnā koutou oku rangatira, tēnā koutou ngā mātāwaka, a tēnā hoki koutou kei te haukainga. Uh, he honore nui tēnei, tēnā koutou uh, i te āwha nui, i pā ki Aotearoa, uh, i ngā wiki uh, tata nei, uh, haere i ngā mate, haere, haere atu rā, haere ki te kainga tūturu, uh, nā koutou i tangi, nā tātou i tangi. Uh, hoki mai ki a tātou te kanau hi ora e pai nei, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa, ko Rino Tiri Kātene ahau, uh, ko hau te uh, mini tatua rua mo ngā take tau hoko hoko. Tēnā tātou. Well, good afternoon everyone and uh, thank you Trina, Jennifer. Um, wonderful to be here at the uh, ATEP Policy School. Um, I really appreciate that introduction, uh, Trina. <laughs> I come from the south. Uh, the big guy with the, from the big mountain, and uh, it's just wonderful to be here at this ATEP Policy School. I've recently been, um, uh, I guess, uh, appointed, yes, appointed to the role of uh, Minister um, of State for Trade and Export Growth, and um, uh, so I'm, I'm very proud um, to have reached that milestone in my parliamentary career. Uh, so it's a, essentially an, an associate minister role, uh, and you would have heard from Minister O'Connor uh, earlier today. And um, uh, yeah, I'm just really uh, looking forward to um, continuing my work, which I did as an undersecretary, and now into a, a formal ministerial role. Uh, but I want to talk to us today, I'm talking about Māori trade and New Zealand's regional trade agreements. Um, and there, this is a, um, a fascinating a uh, real live area which is um, so important for, for Aotearoa New Zealand and it's a real privilege for me to be um, you know, working in this space and now to, uh, to have these formal delegations uh, in this role. Um, so as I said in my mihi, I, I want to uh, mihi to all of our haukainga here also and everyone uh, in this beautiful whale, uh, but I also want to acknowledge the recent events, um, Cyclone Hale, Cyclone Gabriel, and all those that have been affected, uh, particularly those in Tatai Rafati and the Hawke's Bay. Uh, so our thoughts definitely go out to uh, all of those affected um, whānau and communities at this time. Uh, so we're here to discuss um, important issues around business and trade. And can I also acknowledge University of Auckland's Public Policy uh, Institute for putting on this event. I, um, we have a wonderful team at the Te Manatu Aorere and um, they write some really wonderful speeches and I want to pay them the honour to, to make sure that I read it thoroughly. <laughs> so I impart all this wonderful, um, great corded or great information that we have here on the wonderful work that's happening in this area. And I, I do want to acknowledge the Manatu Aorere team that is here today, um, in particular Avangali, uh, Vitalis, incredible uh, incredible team of um, of great devoted public servants that you all are and so um, a mihi to you all for the wonderful work that you do for Aotearoa. So um, well you would have 
I'm sure you might have seen me before uh, back in 2021 because uh, I, I believe I presented virtually uh, during those Zoom type uh, um, cordial or sessions that we that we gave, but it certainly makes a whole lot of difference to be able to be here in person, and uh, so yeah, it's it's um, yeah very, really wonderful that as we say in Maori to be kanohi ki te kanohi, uh, face to face uh, with you all. So um, I'm talking about our today talking about our trade agenda, uh, the trade for all agenda. I'm sure Minister O'Connor touched on that today, and the. Trade for All agenda, which started out under Minister Parker, David Parker, um, was set up in 2018, and that now guides our approach to how we work across all of the trade area and the, ensuring that, we, that trade benefits all New Zealanders. As we know, trade is a critical part of Aotearoa's economy, it has been right back to the early Māori traders as well, so vitally important, and we know that trade improves our prosperity and we want to ensure our trade agreements help all New Zealanders um, benefit from this. So the Crown's trade for all approach uh, in partnership uh, with Māori, we have um, recognises this. And uh, we have a unique uh, opportunity to be able to draw off uh, ensuring that the benefits of trade do permeate right, right across society and particularly to Māori as well. And that's another important part of the role that I have so when we talk about um, trade and trade for all, I guess when we're looking at Māori, the Māori economy, that's sort of like the direct um, business interests, I guess, that are participating in trade. And as we know, the Māori economy is a critical part of uh, the Aotearoa, New Zealand economy. Uh, it's valued at approximately 70 billion, and uh, it's, it is recording um, you know, uh, stellar growth. Māori own a significant proportion of our primary sectors, um, whether it's in seafood, uh, fisheries assets, uh, land interests, pastoral, uh, forestry, and uh, agribusiness, sheep and brief. So Māori are significant, uh, uh, are very significant in, those, in, in, that, in that sense. But it also goes beyond that. When we're talking about uh, trade for all, yes, there are the trade aspects, uh, but there's also uh, the indigenous, I guess, aspects of what Māori can bring to um, enhance our profile as Aotearoa New Zealand in the world, on the world stage and also when we rub shoulders uh, with all of our other partners involved in our various trade architecture uh, around the world. So as a government, we're trying to optimise these international trade opportunities uh, for Māori exporters as part of Trade for All to take leadership roles. We want to expand that indigenous uh, participation and the leadership role that New Zealand has that other countries look to us for as being leaders in that space um, through collaboration agreements um, in global trade. And so this leads to the actual work that we have been doing, which was set up by Minister Mahuta when she was uh, in, an, in an associate trade role and it's a work program called Aotearoa Kiteao. And it's a strategy to um, support Māori economic uh, tr trade and growth and to position uh, and expand Indigenous participation uh, in trade. And so there are four areas to that work. It's growing Māori exporter opportunity and success. And a lot of that work's actually done through uh, the likes of NZTE and the work that they do with, um, with the Māori exporter sector. There are aspects around protecting and supporting Matauranga Māori, um, strengthening international indigenous connections, uh, and promoting um, inter indigenous trade missions and exchange opportunities. And uh, so I've been continuing on that work, and we have uh, refreshed it, refined it, and, uh, but that is definitely the focus, uh, and there's a lot that falls within those various categories, which I'll, I'll run through. But if we're looking at um, some of the developments or, um, or, or, I guess, milestones that we've achieved under this Trade for All agenda, under our Aotearoa Kiteao strategy, I think uh, I like to look to the UK FTA, Free Trade Agreement. That was the first FTA 
that, that was actually initiated, it was begun and completed under our trade for all agenda. And so responding to those um, uh, objectives, to, to those objectives, you know, Māori were really, um, you know, it was important that we actually you know, achieved some, uh, some, some milestones, I guess, in terms of that FTA. And I'm pleased to say that that agreement um, includes the most advanced set of provisions, uh, world first really, uh, that recognises the benefit that Māori trade interests um, represent and that is uh, also included in a Māori trade and economic cooperation chapter. And it also includes uh, Māori concepts of uh, within the FTA and the environment chapter and provisions for Māori SMEs and wahine Māori and these are all the new benchmarks that we want to build into our, into our free trade agreements beyond just um, tariffs and setting regu uh, making regulation a bit easier. We also want to be able to make these uh, statements and benchmarks which demonstrate our trade for all agenda as a country. And so I'm really proud of uh, a number of individuals in this room who were instrumental in actually um, drafting those particular provisions, uh, the hard negotiations that took place, and, uh, we, and to actually achieve that. And uh, so I acknowledge Bangali especially, uh, and his team, Tani Maifanonga, and, uh, and many others uh, who have been involved in that. So not only did we achieve that for the UK FTA, we did it with the EU FTA as well. And again, you know, that was a, a whole different um, beast altogether but another great achievement that we were able to, to um, you know, to achieve through these modern new approach that we have to, to setting new benchmarks within our trade agreements and across our trade architecture. And so um, we, we also work, as I've mentioned, uh, you know, with Māori business and I, I want to acknowledge um, our relationship with Australia and uh, that is also part of that indigenous exchange that I mentioned as part of the Aotearoa Ki Te Ao. And um, it's a big year for Australia. I want to acknowledge if we have some representatives here. Uh, and there is a natural fit. We're close neighbours. Um, and the indigenous um, whanaungatanga that has been achieved uh, just through the uh, collaboration agreements that we have initially started uh, with Australia, and now that has uh, been um, expanded out into other instruments, which I'll talk about uh, shortly. So it is a, a also a big year for Australia. Uh, we know that they've got their voice re uh, referenda, referendum happening, um, but there is a real um, active exchange uh, between uh, indigenous business in, in uh, Australia and New Zealand but also right across the board. And I think that's really a wonderful enhancement to our CER uh, relationship, which marks 40 years this year. Uh, so again, these are new, uh, new additions, I guess, to our whole um, work and trade in the trade policy area. Um, I want to talk about uh, IPECTA. Now, that is the um, Indigenous Peoples Economic Trade and Cooperation Arrangement. And that came into effect last year uh, during our hosting of APEC uh, 2021, which took place last year. It was a successful hosting year, but for us to actually achieve that as well um, is, uh, is another significant milestone that we've achieved. Um, and so IPECTA is the first of its kind. It's great that you know we, we, we are real innovators in the trade policy space uh, and that other countries really look to us for the, for the great ideas that we have and the ability for us to actually think outside the box and think inclusively, think broadly. And um, so IPECTA was the first of its kind, that, uh, that arrangement, and it represents indigenous voice, values and aspirations, including those of our neighbours in Australia, as I've just mentioned. They're a part of it. Uh, Canada's a part of it as well as uh, Chinese Taipei indigenous groups. And of course, um, um, we, we, our free trade agreement provisions re regarding a, a Maori indigenous chapter was first included in our arrangement. 
uh, with, with uh, Chinese Taipei. So this instrument is unique and um, I'm very proud that you know, we've achieved this innovation. It's plurilateral. We want more uh, um, countries to join and economies to join. And um, I know that there's an active group, I guess, uh, who are going to be uh, wanting to talk to us about, about that. So we are also um, doing work uh, with our, as I mentioned, our free trade agreements. Um, and we have also, uh, I, I want to focus because this is going to be an important part of my role. Uh, we are looking at upgrading our FTA with uh, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and Australia. I love these acronyms, uh, ANSFTA. So with over, uh, yeah, ASEAN, a huge, um, huge markets for us, $7 billion in export. It's now our third largest trading partner. So it's, um, it's really great that we've been able to conclude an upgrade to uh, that free trade agreement. I want to acknowledge Stephen Jacoby in the room and work that he's, uh, he does um, across the sector. But that is a really dynamic region and I'm really proud that we'll be later this year uh, doing the final approvals and ratifications of, of, uh, of that upgrade. You would have heard of RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. That came, you know, 15 uh, economies equates to a third of the world's population, takes over half of our exports. I mean, a very, very significant um, uh, free, tra uh, free trade agreement. It's estimated to add around $2 billion to New Zealand's exports once it's fully implemented. So again, the, these, are, uh, um, um, these are all um, additions or enhancements to our trade architecture that have been taking place under our our trade for all agenda. And um, so I guess what is my role? My role is, uh, it's, an, it's an associate role, but I'm called Minister of State for Trade and Export Growth. I, I think it's a, um, a UK must be convention, but it sounds good to me. <laughs> but it's, uh, so, but it's an associate role, so, I've worked closely with Minister O'Connor uh, when I was undersecretary, his undersecretary, and I know how hard that he works uh, um, constantly uh, across his various portfolios, but in particular for trade. Um, so the, the work that we have been achieving, though, there are, there are definitely many layers to it. And, but I'm very proud of the fact that we have been able to achieve these new benchmarks. This is what we talk about when we talk about high quality free trade agreements um, and the provisions that we're putting in around the environment, around uh, climate change, around women, around SMEs and around indigenous uh, are, are world leading and our counterparts around the world, many mostly much bigger than us, they want to come and they want to uh, do these arrangements with us. And that puts us in a real world-leading position. So we can be proud of that, that we have adopted this agenda across our trade policy. If I think back, especially when it relates to Māori, I used to work many years ago in the Māori trade promotional space. And I must say, there was, it was a, trade policy was another world. There was absolutely no engagement with Māori. There was no connection there whatsoever. And through, I guess, some Waitangi tribunal proceedings, but also through um, just the advocacy that has been taking place from across the Māori sector, we've seen a, a huge change in, um, in what, how we approach it. And trade for all, I guess, reset everything. And that's why um, I'm really proud that we have been able to achieve these um, these new and world-leading innovations. And Māori are benefiting too. Um, as an example, uh, by having the engagement that we have now with Māori, and we do it across various groups, there's a group called Te Taumata, there's a group called Ngā Toki Whakarururanga, 
uh, there is uh, an I picked up panel that we are establishing. All of these um, engagement partners that we have, and obviously that permeates out wider through to Māori economic interests, the iwi chairs of the world and the Federation of Māori Authorities and the like. But by having that engagement, we are able to actually make the changes within the schedules within the free trade agreements. What products are actually the ones that actually will make a, a demonstrable difference? You know, saving, putting more money back into our pockets. And, and by having that engagement, manuka honey, seafood products, specific ones into EU markets, we've been able to actually make those immediate gains uh, for, um, for those Māori exporters. And so that's, that's definitely what you want. That's, that's ensuring that um, the, the trade for all is actually reaching um, all of those right across Aotearoa and New Zealand. Uh, so I guess that's really the gist of my kōrero today. I want to acknowledge all of our up-and-coming um, diplomats and representatives from um, Manatu Aorere, and uh, likewise everyone else that is taking an active interest or works in this uh, important space. It is, a, it is um, as I mentioned, uh, this is an exciting space because it is so vital to our interests as, as a country, as Aotearoa, and for our economy as a trading nation. Uh, so, uh, again, I'm very privileged to be in this role. I thank you for the opportunity for a court at all today, and uh, I'm looking forward to maybe fielding a few questions. Actually, before I get into that, thank you for this opportunity today because I would have faced my first question in the house. <laughs> so I, I, luckily I dodged that. <laughs> but um, just so happened, uh, yeah, I, 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 I had a more important business to attend to. <laughs> so I uh, mihi to you all, nō reira e oku raurangatira mā hurirauna i tō tātou whare, te nā koutou, te nā koutou, a te nā tātou katoa. He Pata, any, any questions? I've got one. Yes. Could you, exp I know you said Associate Minister, but Minister of State. So how does it, how do you go, how does that work? So, good question. To be honest, I've asked quite a few people, <laughs> including Van Gally. He didn't know either. <laughs> so, it sounds flat. Yes, yes. <laughs> I understand it's a convention that is used. I think in the UK it's like a mid-tier minister in terms of how their parliament works. But when it comes to, I guess, representing uh, you know, your, your country uh, in overseas fora, in negotiations or, or other important meetings, uh, they like to have a minister at the table. So hence the name Minister of State. Uh, and if I got that wrong, well, well <laughs> but I, I'm pretty sure that's sort of uh, what I'm, a, I'm an associate though, but I do have distinct delegations. So I am responsible for the Māori work program that I've mentioned. Uh, I am responsible for a number of our, uh, uh, roughly our trade architecture in the Southeast Asia region, um, and also PESA in the Pacific. Uh, but a big, big event this year is our hosting of CPTPP. And uh, we're great because we're the host. So Minister O'Connor will be the chair hosting th that important meeting across those 11 economies. And I'll be at the table as well representing Aotearoa. So, yeah. Uh, 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 kia ora, Minister. Uh, thank you so much for that great uh, presentation. I wondered, I'm, I'm here. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, kia on. Um, I wondered what you would see as the sort of the, the priorities for the next little while. I mean, is it expanding that Indigenous uh, trade agreement? Is it building in some Indigenous trade provisions into CPTPP? Is it something more sort of granular and practical? I mean, what's, what's the priority that you see in the next little while? Well, I, I actually consider we, we are... We are putting like a platform in place uh, through these uh, 
chapters that we are putting in. But I would like to see the Māori sector build on it. This is an, an opportunity for um, you know, the, the Māori economy to be able to think, where do we want to take these provisions and how can we um, you know, get more involved? So, yeah, I, I definitely see it as a, you know, no one would have ever thought that there would have been a, an inclusion of an Indigenous chapter in any trade agreement, I guess, you know, five, ten years ago. So to now have these provisions in place, they are new, they are innovative, and it's really up to those that actually seek to, to strive and build on them to, um, to take them where they want them to go. Uh, but ultimately, we want them to obviously increase our foreign exchange earnings and grow our wealth. Kia ora, Mr. Uh, thank you very much for the korero. Um I just had a question. Uh, I'm interested in uh, trade between indigenous people uh, between different countries. Obviously, it's fantastic to see the Māori economy growing um, and more exports uh, around the world from indigenous companies in uh, New Zealand. Um, I'm interested in your thoughts on those kind of direct connections between indigenous peoples globally um, and how you can kind of foster those um, I guess in an organic way, I suppose. And just your thoughts on that area. Sure, it's uh, a very good question. I think um, uh, there are two aspects, as I said. I think we want indigen indigenous people to thrive and to be able to you know, increase their opportunities and um, grow their economies by international trade with whoever that we have available through all of our architecture and wherever we can get the best, best value for our, for our goods. So I think it's, but within that, within that sort of international space, yes, there is a very, there is a whanaungatanga aspect that indigenous people share across the world. And that's why I see us as, a, as being world leading in that respect, because we are now showing other nations and countries around the world what they can do for their indigenous people. And so there is that aspect that is, comes within like the IPECTA that I was talking about. And um, again, I think it's up for the, those, those uh, participants in, in the business world and the export markets to be able to make those connections in a business sense, whether it's an in investment or whether it is in trading goods. But there will always be a very close connection, I think, among indigenous people from that cultural aspect. And I think, um, and that, that naturally just sits there, whether it's with Australia, that we've just had some wonderful exchanges with them, whether it was the rugby league that took place in Rotorua recently with the NRL Indigenous All-Stars and the, and the Māori All-Stars. So that, that, those connections, uh, I guess, we want to encourage to take place. Um, and I guess, you know, a real added enhancement to all of that will be some trade and business relationships, which I'm sure will logically progress. Uh, and we are putting in place architecture to ensure that we can help and you know, share our experiences with other like-minded countries that want to join in with our IPICTA agreements and, and, and uh, likewise maybe follow us in terms of putting in uh, indigenous trade chapters within their free trade agreements. Yes. Uh, kia ora, Minister. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation. I, I just had a question about the trade chapters that are in the agreements with the UK and the EU, uh, because as you say, they are groundbreaking and they're certainly the first time that we've seen those uh, partners uh, willing to include the commitments, but the commitments are cooperative. Uh, they're, they're most of them, they're, they're not something that we can really hold those partners to in a legal sense. So um, in your role, what will be your request to those partners? What do you expect to see in terms of support or activities or engagements with uh, those partners to support Maori business going forward? Well, uh, a very good question. I think the fact that we do have these provisions in place um, sets the platform, like I said. So there is something there which is actually guiding parties. Um, and so I, I, I'm, and that's where our um, trade missions uh, and the like will be those pathfinders, I guess, that can sort of make those connections in that respect. Uh, and that's why that's part of, 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 
of that Aotearoa ki te ao, uh, work. So uh, I think, you know, we can't obviously impose things on, these are all negotiated and these are all arrangements, but I guess our, our partners uh, sign up to them too. So they obviously mean something to them as well. And that's, this is a whole new space which I think we, we all can play a part in filling. Um, and I think for me, it's about guiding the way to ensure that our Māori economic interests and Māori iwi and uh, uh, all those that uh, are involved in the trade area can see the opportunities and create a future for building what they want to um, achieve from those provisions. So, testing. Can you hear me? Oh, cool. Um, sorry, so I just want to preface this sort of just... I guess in a general sense, and I think everyone sort of um, acknowledges it, we are sort of heading into a, I guess, growth of our understanding as a country of te ao Māori and sort of um, linking that back in with our everyday, you know, lives and culture. Um, my question is sort of, and it has to do with the fact that this year is an election year, um, and reflecting on your um, party manifesto, and I think also reflecting on um, conversations that I've heard with uh, a Māori wahine uh, business panel, um, there's always been concerns around um, IP um, protections, um, given that there are sort of many instances of overseas around, um, you know, Māori, like, hakas are being used for purposes that might not have, um, that, that shouldn't be in, I guess they sort of denigrate the mana of, you know, of things that are culturally significant to Māori. Um, so I was just sort of, this might be a bit political, but more in the sense, like, do you think that within the Labour Party or within your own sort of, um, delegations, you think you'd push harder on, um, in, like putting in policies on protections for um, IP of you know, Matauranga Māori and uh, that stuff. Oh yes, well, uh, putting on that hat, I'm, I'm sure that policy will remain in place. I, I guess the work that we are doing um, has been um, there is a Matauranga Māori dimension aspect to it. We we, we realise, look, as the government as the, 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 the crown, we haven't always got it right. And that's why we have learnt through um, putting in place trade for all. We are, and we're also, we're learning all the time, but we are, uh, increased our uh, level of engagement with Māori, as I mentioned, all the various groups that we're dealing with. And we have specific groups around the, the Mātauranga Māori uh, aspect, and it's not just done through the ministry, it's actually also there's other ministries, Te Puni Kōkiri, and who, who are involved looking at those issues. So I guess it's just a work in progress, but um, I'm pleased with the, with the progress that, that we are making, but there's always more that can be done. I guess in a lot of respects, though, we have to... Um, there's always limits to how... The reality of any any agreement, any negotiation, is you know we, we aren't going to be able to achieve everything that we want to achieve. So these are negotiations, but at least now through the way that we are conducting our our, our trade negotiations, um, these are important aspects which are included on the cabinet mandate for us to be able to actually do our best in terms of those negotiations. So having them actually there. Um, you know, front and centre uh, is a huge game, and it's an evolving area. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that that, that answers your question. Um, the other aspect around that is, um, yeah, we're aware of our legal responsibilities as well. So the Waitangi Tribunal, for instance, has um, you know basically pulled us up on a few things as to uh, Manatu Aorere. But we also have to be very careful that um, what we are doing in terms of um, broadening the scope of our domestic issues doesn't, um, you know, affect our overall arrangements that we've already achieved through our free trade agreements across these um, major groupings. So there is always, it's always, you know, just a, uh, you know, an ongoing negotiation, I guess, that takes place and, uh, uh, in that whole process. Oh, last one? Okay. I've been told I've got 30 seconds. Uh, Stephen Cartwright, uh, as of yesterday, the British Consul General here in Auckland and thrilled to be here. So just a comment to the previous question. 
I'm really excited by the FTA, I'm really excited by the Indigenous chapter, and I'll do anything I can over the next four years, hopefully, to operationalise it. Looking forward to trade missions and working really closely together, and thrilled to be here. Thank you very much. Oh, kia ora for that. Nga <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was your name? I'm writing that down and I'm going to come and see you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Ngamahi mai oha atu kia koe minister. 